The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Well, Mr. what can I do for you this pleasant afternoon? I don't know, Peavy. I'm willing to consider anything. Just, uh, just dropped in for a little conversation, did you? I suppose I did. Well, anything to advise a customer. I see Truman has taken a firm stand on a pretty big question. Oh, what's that? Reckless driving. <laughs> He's against it. I don't think I feel like talking politics, Phoebe. All right. It's uh, fairly warm for this time of year, don't you think so? I feel chilly. Well, uh, it gets chillier in the evening. Last night it was so hot I couldn't sleep. Well, last night was warm. Confounded, Peavy, all you do is agree with me. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yes, you do. You've had the weather hot, cold, warm, and chilly in the last two minutes. Well, you asked for it in conversation. Then let's skip it. I'm sorry, Peavy. I don't mean to be disagreeable. It's just that I've had to... Good afternoon, Mr. Peavy. This is Doc Martin. Mm -hmm. Why, well, hello, Strike Martin. I didn't recognize you from the back. Yeah, it's me. How have you been? I've been just fine, thank you. Uh, Mr. Peavy, have you got my prescription ready? All wrapped up, Mrs. Ransom. Here you are. That'll be a dollar fifty and five cents to the government. Here, Peavy. Take it out of this. Oh, no, Charles Martin. I can't let you. Take it out of the five, Peavy. Well, no, I... please. I've got the exact amount right here. But, Leela, if I want to buy you a present. Thank you, Mrs. Ransom. We'll call again. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, Leela, wait a minute. Are you busy this evening? I'm afraid I am, Charles Martin. Well, I mean, anything special. I thought maybe we could go out to dinner or something. I'm sorry. I'm having company for dinner, and I expect to be busy all evening. Oh. Well, how would it be if I dropped over for a while? After dinner, of course. I don't believe that would work out very well. But if you're just having company, what difference would one more make? Two company, Strath Martin. Three is a crowd. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. T. Lula, can I take you home? I have an escort, thank you. Evie, do me a favor, will you? Look out the window and tell me who she's with. Well, I don't like to spy on a customer, Mr. Gildersleeve. This isn't spying, Peavy. I'd look myself, only I don't want her to see me. Hurry up. Mm, well. There he is. Young fellow. Does he look like a newspaper man? Hard to tell with his hat on. <laughs> He must have cracked a joke. She's laughing. Oh, that's him, all right. Oh, my. Peavy, what happened? Oh, I don't think I'd better tell you, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> but he's on pretty easy terms with her. <laughs> Say no more, Peavy. <laughs> I'm not usually noisy at meals, my boy. No, but you generally holler at me a few times about something. You never even noticed I had two helpings of ice cream. I noticed, but I let it go. Don't ever make the mistake of thinking I don't notice. More coffee, Uncle? No, thank you, Marjorie. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? I feel all right. Mr. Gilbert, do you mind if I clear the table now all this coffee? I'd like to go downtown for a little while if it's all right. Go ahead, Bertie. Leroy will help you. Help Bertie get this stuff out of the kitchen, Leroy. Okay. Bertie's a good kid. Bertie's my pal. What's going on downtown, Bertie? A friend is taking me to a dance at the church. Somebody new, Bertie? Oh, no. Just one of my old reliables. 
Uh, good old Bertie. Get away, Bertie. I got a train load. My goodness, Leroy, I'm gasping and you're doing all my work. Don't think nothing of it, Bertie. Taking my lunchbox tomorrow. Leroy, we don't charge for favors. Who's charging? I do her a favor, she does me a favor. Gangway, coming through. Be careful. You watch him, Bertie. He's got too much on that tray. Just put it down by the sink, Leroy. Okay. Oops. Well, only one. I'd better get out there and clean it up. Miss Margie, could you do me a favor? Sure, buddy. Oh, well, never mind. I can take care of it tomorrow. I'll do it. What is it? I borrowed a mixing bowl from Miss Rant from yesterday, and I forgot to I'll it. take it, Bertie. Where is it? Say no hurry, Miss Gilfrey. I don't feel she needs it. Of course she does. At least she might. Don't worry about it, Auntie. I'll take it over. I'll take it. And now, where is it, Bertie? No trouble, Bertie. No trouble at all. Hmm. All the shades are down. Well, no reason for me to feel like a criminal. I'm here on a legitimate errand. Leela, guess who? Look, Martin. Yeah, that's right. Bertie asked me to return this mixing bowl she borrowed yesterday. Oh, well, you shouldn't have bothered, Red. No bother. Glad to do it. Well, I'll take it, and thank you. you better let me take it right out of the kitchen. Then you won't drop it. What? Pardon me. I'll just put it in... Oh, company. <laughs> Still eating? We're having our coffee. Well, I can't stay, but I might just have one cup with you. <laughs> well, Rick. I don't believe I've met this gentleman, Leela. No, you haven't. Oh? Well, uh... Mark, this is Mr. Gildersleeve, my next-door neighbor. This is Mark Wayne. Well, well, glad to meet you. How are you? <laughs> I hope you don't mind my barging in like this. Leela and I run in and out of each other's houses at all hours. Uh, that's quite an exaggeration. Shall we go into the parlor? Coffee all gone? It's cold, I'm afraid. Oh, well, in that case, after you, Mr. Wade. Uh, come on, Mom. After you, Lila. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> Uh, what do you call you, Leela? Mark calls me Lila. He says I lie like anything. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty good. Can you make a joke out of my name, Mr. Wade? I didn't catch your name. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Let's go into the parlor. <laughs> well, shall we sit down? Oh, sure, you... Want to sit on my lap, sugar, or would you rather sit on Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> Mark, you're terrible. I'm going to sit right here, and you boys can sit together on the sofa. I'll stand up for a while. <laughs> then I'll take the sofa. <laughs> Have a stick of gum, Mr. Gildersleeve? I don't chew, thanks, especially when ladies are present. Well, maybe the lady will put you at your ease. Have a chaw, Lila? Mm, thank you. You can see how Mark has corrupted me, Rock Martin. Yes. I understand you're a newspaper man, Mr. Wade. That's right. A scribe, a news hound, a gentleman of the press. Rip out the front page. The lady shot her husband. Put it back. It's only a flesh wound. <laughs> oh, <laughs> didn't I tell you he was a scream, Rock Martin? Scream is right. Uh, why don't you tell us some fascinating stories about your newspaper adventures, Mr. Wade? I'm saving all that stuff for my memoirs through darkest journalism with gum and camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mark, how awful. What did he say? Oh, never mind. Lilac, baby, we're going to have a little music or not? Well, I don't know if this is just the time for it. If you want a little music, I'd be glad to sing Mark just likes me to play for him. Oh. Uh, play for me, Lilac, if your friend doesn't mind. Go ahead. Play our song, sugar. You want me to? Go ahead. Our song. 
Just picture a penthouse way up in the sky. Da 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 When we're alone. Da 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 when we're alone. Pretty song, isn't it, the Gildersleeve? I've heard it sung better. Oh, yeah? da 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 When we're alone. But we're not alone, are we, Mr. Gildersleeve? Do you want to fight? Oh! Does your friend want to fight? For money, marbles are chalk. Huh? I promised my mother I'd never fight for free. <laughs> you step outside for a minute, you big smart aleck, and I'll not... Mark, Mark, Now you boys stop this instant. I'm ashamed of both of you. Well, he started it. He insulted me. Apologize, both of you. Come on, Mark, I'm safe. Mr. Gildersleeve, if I have unwittingly offended you, it was intentional. Huh? <laughs> Martin, it's your turn. I won't. Frock Martin, you're a guest in my house under rather unusual circumstances. Well, I'm sorry. Hmm, that's best. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll play gin rummy. It's lots of fun. Uh, Mark, will you help me get the card table? It's right here in the hall. I'll help you, Leela. I'm already on the job, pal. It's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder what they're doing now. <laughs> Why, George, I'll go and see. Listen, Chuck. Wait. Oh, so it's that way, is it? Evidently, I'm not wanted around here. Well, I can take a hint. Good night, you silly people. are times when a homemaker feels she's in luck when she has some leftovers in the refrigerator. And it's double luck if you also have a package of Kraft smooth-melting cheese food, Velveeta. For then, with Velveeta's rich cheese sauce, you can transform leftover vegetables, chicken, veal, seafood, or ham into another grand main dish. Now, here's how you make the cheese sauce with dependable Velveeta. Simply melt the Velveeta in the top of a double boiler. Then stir in one-third cup of milk. If you wish, season that smooth golden sauce with cayenne or Worcestershire. Pour it on the hot leftovers and listen to the compliment. Listen with special pleasure because you know that nutritious Velveeta is giving the family fine protein, milk minerals, food energy, vitamin A, and riboflavin. At the food store, keep your eye open for genuine Velveeta. The cheese food you can depend on to melt smooth, add delicious flavor, and important food value. Wonder what Leela's doing over there now. Holding hands with that guy, probably. Confound it, I can't just sit here. If anybody wants me, I'll be at the Jolly Boy. <laughs> Poor Gildersleeve. Poor, unhappy Gildersleeve. Outwitted and outclassed, spurned by the one he loves. He can only imagine what goes on next door. But you and I, through the magic of radio, we can eavesdrop a little. And to tell the truth, Gildersleeve is not far wrong. Oh, 
Pardon me, madam. Is this seat taken? Oh, don't stop. Just move over a little. I don't believe we've been introduced. Oh, I'm the guy you're in love with, remember? Or do you? One meets so many. Mark, you don't really believe the things you say. All those cynical remarks. That's not the real you. We all wear a mask. Oh, but... <laughs> but underneath there's something finer. I can tell it just as plain. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. That's Shakespeare. There I go getting literary again. Play, Leela. Music be the food of love. Play on. By the way, I remember to tell you, I adore you. Tell me again. <sighs> Someday I'll write a novel. You'll be in it. Will I? I'll sell it to the movies for a million dollars. Oh, you will. I know you will. I have great faith in your writing, Ma. You must have faith in it, too. And with a million dollars, let me see. Do you like hot dogs? Oh, love them. I'll buy a million dollars worth of hot dogs. Silly. <laughs> That's a good one, Floyd. I would just like to say this, gentlemen. If a member can't come down here and spend an evening at this club without having remarks made about him... Oh, now, Commissioner, don't be a sore head. Lloyd intended no harm, Gildy, and no disrespect to either you or Leela. Just a little joke? Yeah, just, wasn't it, Floyd? Just a little joke. Yeah. Sure it was. What's the matter? Can't you take a little joke? Floyd made a remark. Remark my eye. I'll leave it a peavy here if it was a remark. Well, now, I... I don't say it was the funniest joke in the world. I'd say it was a joke. Floyd made a remark about a fellow member. And unless he apologizes... Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, don't you think you're being just a little touchy? I do not. Well, if you don't think so. <laughs> Either Floyd apologizes or I go home. Apologize for what? I ain't done nothing. What does a guy have to do to crack jokes around here? Get a license? Well, now, Floyd, why why don't you just apologize and put an end to all this? Come on, be a good fellow. Well, why don't he be a good fellow? I take it you refuse to apologize. That I do. No, Floyd, I don't think that attitude is going to be helpful. Well, who's trying to be helpful? Stop shoving me, Steve. I'm not shoving you, Floyd. I'm just trying to reason with you. Well, reason with him. Anyone else going home? Judge? Well, it is getting a little late. I think I'll be running along, too, boys. Good night, Peavy. Good night, Floyd. Good night, Judge. Good night. Good night, Peavy. Oh, good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hope you uh, feel better. Come along, then, Judge. Good night, sore head. You know, Gildy, I think you went a little far there tonight. I don't care to discuss it. Well, you did. Can I drive you home? No, thanks, Judge. I think I'll walk. You will do me good. Well... You're the doctor. Good night, then. Good night. What's the matter with me, anyway? Getting into fights with everybody? My friends, even. Who do you think you're fooling? You know what's the matter with you. Why didn't you marry her when you could? Always putting things off. You never can make up your mind. Now this young fella comes in and cuts you out. Well, what if he is a little younger? What has he got that I haven't got? What have I got that he hasn't got? <laughs> well, I know one thing he hasn't got. Money. Yes, by George, I can offer her more than he can. Newspaper man. Ha! Probably makes about $30 a week. Come on, Andy up, son. <laughs> <laughs> No, by George, I'm not licked yet. Gildersleeve doesn't give up in a fight. I may stall around, but once my mind is made up, why, I should have done this years ago.
You know what you are? You're a portrait by Titian. Me? You're the sunset on the Grand Canal in Venice. You're just saying that to be nice. You're the laughter of little children rolling their hoops wide below. <laughs> You're the sound of French taxicabs honking their horns in Paris. Don't stand there listening, Leroy. Who's listening? Well, go do something. Hello, Bessie. Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve, Bessie. I, uh, excuse me. Leroy, go away. <laughs> Bessie, I may be a little late to the office. If a package arrives to me from the jewelers, put it in the safe. Never mind. Just put it in the safe. Now, let me see. The ring, the license, the ticket. Better call about the ticket. <laughs> Leroy, confound it, I told you to go away. Go where? Where is it go? Go to school. Go anywhere. But don't hang around here. I don't see you making Marge go away. Marjorie? You here? I'm not listening. Nuts. A man has no more privacy in this house. Yes, please. Yes, Bertie, what is it? Dr. Needham phoned a little while ago. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dr. Needham. Did he um, say anything, Bertie? He said he found he was going to have to be out this morning on church business, but he did try to come over and talk to him this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, what are you all standing around staring at me for? Nothing. Come here, my boy. You too, my dear. Sit down, boy. Uh, don't go, Bertie. This concerns you too. Yes, sir. Marjorie? Leroy? I wouldn't be surprised. If your old uncle had some news for you shortly. Yes, sir, I may have some news. So don't be surprised if you hear some news. <laughs> well, aren't you going to say anything? What kind of news, Uncle Moore? Ah, that's a secret. Oh, brother, here we go again. <laughs> Yes. You seem different tonight somehow. Well, I, I'm getting kind of tired of that piece. Do you know any others? Tired? Of our song? Well, not tired exactly, but uh, I'd like to hear something else. Mark, what is it? Tell me. Well, uh, I don't know if this is the time, but... Well, you're a swell girl, Leland. I wish you every happiness. What? Well, I'm no good, Leela. I'm no good for you. Mark, you mustn't say that. Well, it's true. You shouldn't have anything to do with me. I'm just a newspaper man, and you know newspaper men. Here today and gone tomorrow. But that's what I love about No, no, no. What you ought to do is settle down and marry some nice guy. Somebody dependable. That fella next door, maybe. What if he is a little fat? <laughs> Ma, there's something you're not telling me. What is it? I've got a job in Newark. In Newark? On the ledger. Well. Well, you know what we said, Leela. No strings, no obligations. Free as the birds, both of us. You remember that? I certainly never thought you meant it. Now, don't you worry. You'll get married one of these days. You'll get married. When I do, it will be to a gentleman. Oh, that's the trouble with women, always recrimination. Oh, it's a lot of fuss. Why can't we just be charming about this? No goodbyes and no regrets, that's the way. Now, I'll tell you what you do. You sit down at the piano there and play that piece you play, and I'll just tiptoe out and close the door so as not to spoil the memory. What do you say? I don't care whether you tiptoe or not. Just be sure you close the door. I don't care if he's sitting right there. I'll walk in there and I'll put it to her straight. I'll say to her, Leela, I'm going to ask you to give me just five minutes of your time. I've got something I want to ask you. Will you marry me? Not next month or next week, but right now. I've got the ring. I've got the license. And I've got Dr. Needham where I can lay my hands on him. 
That's my proposition. Take it or leave it. If that smart Alex says anything, I'll tell him to shut up. I will, too. It's him or me. Jack, Mom! Leela, I've been asked you to give me just five minutes of your time. There's something I want to ask you. Why, of course. But come in, won't you? Thanks. Are you looking for something? Where's, uh, what's his name? Mr. Wayne? I haven't the faintest idea. Oh. Well, as I say, Leela, when I ask you to give me just five minutes of your time, I... Are you expecting him? I shall be very much surprised if I ever see him again after the way I passed him off. You, uh, told him to go away? Oh, he was amusing enough for a few days. But no one could stand him for more than that. <laughs> had none of y'all good qualities. That's right. <laughs> oh, good gracious, here I am running on and you stand in my uh, Sit down, won't you? Make yourself comfortable. Don't care if I do. Uh, run and get me an ashtray. That's a good girl. Oh, no ashtray. Oh, now, aren't I terrible? You shall have one right away. There. Now a match? Got one. Oh, oh, let me light it for you. I love lighting your cigars. Hmm. Thanks. Mind if I put my feet up on this stool? Oh, no, no, do. Here, here let me move it for you. That's just some old needlepoint my grandmother beat him crochet. <laughs> now, uh... What is it you wanted to ask me, Doc Oh, yes. Leela? Yes? How would you like to go to the movies? <laughs> I'd love you. Well, if you're a good girl, just as soon as I finish this cigar... I'll run up and get my things on now so I won't have to keep you waiting. Must I wear my pretty new spring hat? Absolutely. <laughs> I always like to look pretty when I go anywhere. That's the stuff. Ah, uh, good old Leela. Well, no use rushing into anything. <laughs> Millions in Europe and Asia are going hungry and facing actual starvation. Therefore, it's up to us, the best-fed nation in the world, to tighten our belts. We can share a meal and save a life. And here's how. Buy only as much bread and other wheat products as you really need. Use rice, fats, and oils sparingly. Don't waste any food. Turn in your used fats and oils at the food store promptly. Plant a garden and raise as much of your family's food as you can. You are saving food for those who desperately need it when you buy less. Especially when you use up those leftovers. Listen, don't eat so much. We could all cut down a little. I know I could. <laughs> there are children abroad who could be kept alive just by the food we throw out. Let's think, think of that when we sit down to dinner. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Good night, everybody. More and more America's good cooks are using Kraft prepared mustards to add lively flavor interest to food. Have you tried blending the tangy flavor of Kraft salad mustard into omelet, Welsh rabbits, chopped pickle relish, and a golden cream sauce for hot cooked vegetables? They're all extra delicious flavored with Kraft salad mustard. Your dealer also is featuring another popular variety, the Kraft mustard with nifty horseradish added. Buy both kinds. Ask for Kraft horseradish mustard and tangy golden Kraft salad mustard when you shop tomorrow. NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.